1988. It went from being a Superman comic to being an annual fixed-sized weekly comic with Superman and Lantern and a bunch of, oh, and Wild Dog, who's in Arrow now. Um, my first editing was a Wild Dog, the Wild Dog wow. feature. See how it all comes around? It's all because of me. <laughs> you heard it here, folks. Here is the source. I created of the, the Speed Arrowverse. Force, Wild Dog, and that connection. What did you do for Green Arrow? Pat Lyle was co editor of Green Arrow. Well, there you go. The, the Mike Rowe years. Um, or Adam. Who else was uh, Dan Jurgens through that for a while? So, I mean, yeah, I was officially the, the assistant editor. So yes, it's all me. I think I'm hearing that. I've been saying it for years, but I can actually start to prove it. Finally get those royalties. No, there'll be no royalties. I'm like the guy who invented the crescent wrench for Sears. You know what he got? He got his, his paycheck in retirement. He, died, he didn't get a dime from the billions made by the crescent wrench or the adjustable crescent. Anyway, it's just a tale. A tale of caution. Any other questions or comments, please? Also about like other characters in the Flash, if you want to ask about them too. The show, I mean. Okay. Star Labs. Yes. Um, so what about Cisco and Caitlin Snow? What do you think about them in the show, and are they going to be part of the show? They're fun characters. I, I they're vaguely drawn from. Yeah, Cisco's a he's Va. In the comics, they introduced a character in the '80s called Vibe, and he was basically a, he was Cisco Ramon, same then. But he was a break dancing superhero. That was his, <laughs> yes, like they did it like they did a, a funny little animated short a few years back, which they did as a parody of that, but he was a break dancer who used break dancing to fight crime. It was the I 80s. think he carried a boombox. Yeah. Yes, he carried, and Caitlin's interested because she actually started out as, a, in the comics, she's Killer Frost. That's, you know. And Shirley Major, and that will be coming up. Yeah, she's, and they're reintroducing Killer Frost in a big way, she's going to be joining the Justice League, and things like that, which is strange, because she was a long-time Firestorm villain, actually. Although she will be played by a different actress in Justice League. What about the comics? Oh, like, they're the having comics. her just... They're, 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 they're reforming her? I don't know, they're, they're doing the Killer She's Frost a villain. one She's show. A, well, you don't call Captain, big guys kill or something. Well, no. <laughs> and she was a Firestorm, that was kind of part of the joke when they introduced her in the TV show, was because she was a she was probably Firestorm's arch, arch nemesis. There was a whole thing with them in, in Crisis, where like, a, guy called Psycho Pirate who can control motions, made her fall in love with Firestorm. It was a whole thing. So they were he kind did, of he did that to me once. <laughs> I, I like Firestorm, but I, I really love what they've done with them in the show. They've made them indispensable. I mean, it's hard to picture the show about those two being in it. They are uh, I think some of the yeah, some of the best written stuff in terms of supporting cast is the the lab scenes are usually tons of fun. And Cisco's naming of, of yeah. <laughs> although it gets Trump this week, I think he's even freezing. It, they're really good. He doesn't get to name the Mariners. It's in the commercial, so I'm not spoiling it. <laughs> he goes, we'll call him, and then Wells says, Mirror Master, boom. And he goes, so I got Trump. I'll act out other scenes for you later if you'd like. <laughs> As for Wells, I don't think I think he's an original creation, more or less. The name is taken from somewhere, a DC character, but he was a DC scientist in something from like the 80s or 90s. I, I, but not a major, and certainly not the character he was. Right. And the other character, like uh, like Joe, who's a big, you know, again, Iris obviously has a dad. Actually, Iris. We've is, met his dad. Iris' dad. dad in the comic, not her future dad. The dad who adopted her was a wacky mad scientist. Named type. Ira. Yep. And he would, they used him. mind they were white people. Yeah. <laughs> they used him a bunch of times during the Silver Age Flash, I think, to get, to get Barry into wacky hijinks, basically. But he was, you know, absent-minded and silly and looked a little like Einstein. I remember they actually did a thing where that he forgot she was from the future. That was their explanation for why Iris didn't know. He forgot to tell her that she was from the future. <laughs> oh wait, I, oh I have a note right here. I was supposed to tell you back in when you were nine. That's weird, I don't even remember that. <laughs> you read too many comics. Or remember too many comics. Why I have forgotten more than you remember. Or I think I do. I, I forgot. Anybody else have commentary? Yeah. 
Do we know exactly how, on average at least, uh, Barry runs now? I don't know that they quantified it yet on the TV show. If they're smart, they won't. You don't. You don't want to. You don't want to set hard limits because then you can't break them later when the plot needs you to. We would set the. We set it in the comics so that we could track his improvement. So during the pre-weight time frame, they had slowed him down. Um, they made it difficult for him to run. <coughs> like the speed of sound, for instance, which I'm not sure what it is, but it's not really fast, because cars can do it. Um, and I think we gradually accelerated, uh, literally, um, his ability to the point where when he was fully in charge of himself in the speed force, he was moving at the speed of light, which is a lot more than the speed of sound, as I recall. But it's, <laughs> It's science and, you know, like time travel just makes my head hurt. Uh, no, I don't remember the numbers, but we had it moving because he needed to move that fast yeah, because we were doing all the cosmic interactions with this. But uh, there, clearly, uh, Barry on TV doesn't move that fast, but he moves very fast and he is progressing. They're, notice, they're mentioning that he's moving faster. They're just not quantifying it. And as, as Sean said, it's probably best they don't. That way they can pull a big one out of the hat if they need him to suddenly have a, a spurt forward. Spurt is really a bad word. I don't know if they've done the bit yet, which you guys introduced was the hard limit, where if you go too fast, you join, become one with the speed force, and you basically disappear. And you, you die. Yeah. Well, you go to speed heaven, basically, is what I remember. No, your energy is just sucked into the... You become part of the battery. And, and kind of like Jedi, I think. And it's like the ultimate fate for all super speedsters eventually, they'll eventually join the speed force. And I don't know if they've touched on that in the show. I think they hinted at it, but they haven't really... Well, in the, in the season ender, there was that sense that you can go into the force, which looks like Barry's living room, as I remember. Uh, no, they, they, did, they did light effects and yeah. stuff when he was traveling. Um, yeah. You can get, you can go too far. You can go too fast. They haven't, they haven't done that um, because they're trying very hard, and rightfully so, not to quantify that either. Yeah. They're not. I mean, the, the the speed force can be any number of things, and so far, but we've now learned there's an intelligence behind the speed force. Something was talking to him, or some things, or entities. I'm not sure. Um, the one thing that I like is. That Barry, uh, in the original comics, could vibrate seamlessly through things. When we wrote Wally, we wanted to give him different aspects of the same powers without changing much. He never was able to move, to vibrate easily through things. Maybe because he was channeling so much of the speed force. When he would vibrate through a wall, say for instance, he would leave so much residual energy that the wall would just explode behind him which kind of, I don't know, seriously mitigated the need to vibrate, but I mean, people could follow him. Uh, in a, somewhere in, I think, the first season, Barry runs so fast he loses control of himself and he's running right at a dumpster, big giant, like a construction dumpster, and he's doing this for a little bit. Like I said, I'd act out other scenes. Um, and he winds up vibrating unintentionally into the dumpster, and then comes out the other side and dumpster explodes. That was our bit. And my phone rang immediately. <laughs> <laughs> and somebody was breathing very heavily on the other side, <laughs> which doesn't happen as often as it used to. Uh, and then Mark Waite said, that was ours. And I went, yeah, pretty cool, right? So Mark Waite, superstar, is a huge fan of the show as well. There's a young man with red gloves. I think you had your hand raised. No, sir. You were just stretching? You're saying his mask off. Oh, I don't oh. Look who he is. Oh. <laughs> that always killed me, by the way, in comics, when somebody would pull their... If you're Clark Kent, which he, you know, or Bruce Wayne. But if you're Barry Allen and your mask got pulled off, who wouldn't know who you were? <laughs> if you're Spider-Man and your mask got pulled off, who wouldn't recognize Peter Parker? Not a public figure, exactly. I mean, some people would. He got his mask pulled off in the middle of the city room at the 
the Daily Bugle, maybe. But if he was on Fifth Avenue and his mask was pulled off, more than likely. Who's that semi pleasant looking young man with the must up brown hair? We don't know who that is. <laughs> but it's, it's one of the conceits, just like putting glasses on makes you look different. Any other questions or commentary? <laughs> All the way in the back, the fellow in the green. You don't have to be snarky today. You can. Uh, do you like the flash? I do. Remind me of your first name. Adam. Adam. How, how long have you been a fan of the flash? TV or comics or both? Uh, I probably started getting the superhero stuff today, but after just the animated series. Oh. Ah. Well, that's a big. Yeah, that is a big entree. Flash has been very well handled in the animated, the Justice League animated. Yes. But all of the versions, I've been watching through the Justice League Unlimited and enjoying it quite a lot. We are at 11.30. We don't have to stop because the room isn't booked until noon. So if anybody else has questions or comments, please feel free. Otherwise, I release you to the wild. Uh, thank you for coming. I hope you enjoyed it.